Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how you can set up super fast access to the most common things that you do with your iPhone. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now when you do a particular task on your iPhone often you can use the Shortcuts app to kind of automate that to make it a little bit easier to do that task. But perhaps even more powerful than that you can create a shortcut that will allow you to access several different things so you can have easy access to the most common things that you do. So let's start by going into the Shortcuts app here and I'm going to create a new shortcut. And I'm going to add an action. The action I'm going to look for here is Menu. And you want to pick Choose from Menu. And this will create a prompt where it will ask you to make a choice. And you could specify as many things as you want. So let's first put the name of the menu. And now let's change the first choice here from the default 1 to something like this. So the first item here will be to make a quick phone call. Let's make the second item a quick text message. And now to add a third item I can click here and then add that one as well. I'm going to add a whole bunch of useful things here without worrying about exactly how they're going to be implemented. So now I've created a whole bunch of different things here. I haven't actually set this up to do any of them yet. But now I've got a menu and you can see here at the top it lists all the items and I can edit them and I can even rearrange them very easily. Then below it has each one repeated here. The idea is I can put actions in between each one of these to actually get the job done. But right now let's name this and let's call this Quick Functions. You're going to want to name this something that can't be confused with the name of an app or another thing your iPhone does because we may use Siri to actually trigger this. Now when we test this out we can see what it looks like. I'm going to tap here at the bottom right and you can see it puts up this big menu here and I can choose one of these things. It doesn't do anything right now. So let's code each one of these. So first let's do the call. I can type Call and choose Call right here and then it's going to put it all the way at the bottom. So what I want to do is drag it up and put it in its proper place in the menu. That will be right here after Call and the name. And then I can tap here and select from my contacts who to call. So now this should work. If I play it and then choose Call Mark it should place the call. I'm using a test iPhone here so it's not going to actually place the call but it normally would just start ringing. Now the next one is going to be for messaging. So let's search for Message and choose Send Message. But this time instead of just tapping it to select and having it be put at the bottom I'm going to tap and hold and drag and you can see I get back into the main list of actions here and I can drop it where I want. So now I can type the message and then choose the recipient. You can type it or press the plus button there. Choose. And you can also add multiple recipients with this plus button here. But you're going to want to also tap this and if Show When Run is selected it will actually open the messages up, put that message in the conversation you're having with that person but then it's up to you to send it. If you turn this off though then it will just send it instantly. Now for the next one let's use Take a Photo and there's actually something called Take a Photo. So we'll select that. We'll drop that in here. And you can select how many photos to take, which camera to use. And you can tap here and also have it show camera preview. With this on it will just take you to the camera app and you're ready to take a photo. That might be what you want but you can turn it off and it will just take the photo right there. You can have it play a playlist. So we'll search for Music and then we'll select Play Music drag that in. I'll select here Playlists. There's that playlist. I'll tap this button right here and now it adds it. You can see it says that. I can tap here and choose my Shuffle options. Let's have Shuffle Songs turned on. So now I can instantly shuffle that playlist. The next one is Open an App. I just chose a weather app but maybe it could be something more like Instagram or something like that. So we'll search for Open and there's Open App. I can drag that into place and then I have to choose the app. 
Bluetooth settings is a little trickier. You can get to settings by typing a special URL. So let's go in here and search for URL. Use that one. And you would think that's for opening up a web page. But there are special URLs you can use to access different parts of the Settings app. I did a video on this before. So the one for Bluetooth is this. But you could also have it go to a regular website. I use Show Web Page. And this time I'll just type in a regular URL. But how about if you want to show some local content? Well, you can go directly to a note. So let's do that. And this is actually going to take two steps because first you want to find the note. So we'll do this here. Find all notes, add a filter, and we'll say the filter is the name contains. And we know that this is called project. And then we're going to also look for show note and put that right underneath so it'll find the note with that name and then show it. We can do the same thing with files. So we can choose File and then just this and we can actually tap here and then select a file. Here is one called Info. This could be anything, a PDF or whatever, even an image. So we'll select that and then we'll use Quick Look and put that right underneath. So it's going to quick look whatever file you specify there. We can do the same thing for a photo here. So I'm going to look for a file again. And select a photo instead. And then use the same quick look underneath that. So now let's test it out. And let's try one like the Bluetooth settings one. And you can see it takes us right to the Bluetooth settings in the Settings app. But what we really need to do now is get easier access to this because we don't want to go into the Shortcuts app and then run it each time. So there are a few things we can do to set up easy access. First let's set up a good icon. We can tap here. We can choose a color that we want. We can choose a glyph that we want. like Maybe this one. And then we can go here and say Add to Home Screen. And then we can customize it a little bit more before adding it to the home screen. And now we'll see it here. We can just activate the entire thing by tapping there and the menu appears. So now we can very easily access any one of these by just tapping it. And you can see now it's playing that playlist. But there are a couple other things that we can do. One idea I'd like is go into Settings and then under Accessibility Go to Touch and then down at the bottom go to Back Tap and set up for Double Tap that shortcut. So you have to go down to the bottom here and you'll see Shortcuts. And there you should see the one you just created. There's Quick Functions. And now we can go and anytime we want just tap twice on the back like that and you can see it appears. But in Accessibility in that same spot you could also set up Assistive Touch which is what I'm using here to show the pointer. But you can customize the top level menu. There's usually a custom one right there already. And you can select for that custom one. You can select your shortcut. So you probably know of this assistive touch dot here that I can move around on the screen. And if you tap it it brings up that menu there. But now you've got Quick Functions as one of the items there. So if you're already using that that's another way to get to this pretty fast. But another thing you could do is simply use Siri to access this. Just use the name that you called it. Quick Functions. And now you can see it comes up and I can choose one of these things. So let's, let's say I want to go to the web page here. But what's even better than that is you can continue to talk to activate it. Watch what happens. Quick Functions. Show Info File. You can see how it does it instantly. Now, even better than that, you could provide Siri with some alternatives. So let's go back into the Shortcuts app here. And then if I choose one of these, like Show Info File, I can choose a synonym. And I can add that right here. So now it doesn't seem to visually change anything. It still says Show Info File. But I can just say Info. Quick Functions, Info, 
And of course you can also set Siri here to listen so you don't have to actually press the side button even to get to these items. So this is just a sample here of the different things you can do. You can continue to add these. You can rearrange them and rename them very easily. You can add several web pages, several different files here. Of course a lot of these can be done with Siri or with their own shortcuts. But it's remembering how exactly to access them that's the problem. Just knowing that you've got this one place to go and it's going to show you a list say of the top 10 things that you're always doing on your iPhone could make life a lot easier. And you may also be able to use this to help somebody out who has difficulty accessing a lot of the functions on their iPhone. You could just set this up, show them how to activate this quick functions list and then they could just select the one that they want to do. It would be great for setting up an iPhone for a young child or an older adult that has trouble using the iPhone. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.